and to introduce uh, today's speaker, um, Dr. Karen Baskerville. She is a professor of the biology department at Lincoln University. Uh, her talk today, which I love the title, is Lincoln Unparalleled, Learn, Liberate, and Lead. So without further ado, we'd like to give a nice warm welcome to our guest speaker today, Dr. Baskerville. So thank you again for the introduction and for inviting me to actually talk today. Um, it's a great opportunity for me. And so, yeah, my title is Lincoln Unparalleled, Learn, Liberate, Lead. So um, Dr. Brenda Allen, she's our 14th president of Lincoln. Um, she started her journey as president in 2017 and she is the first alumna president. So she's the first female alumna president for the university. She has a vision and her vision is reimagine, reimagining the legacy. And in doing that, she, she desires students to learn, liberate and lead. And not only students, but also the whole Lincoln campus, the whole community. She desires everyone to learn, liberate, and lead. So 1854 is um, a wonderful year um, because that was when Lincoln University was founded. And this is a picture looking at the campus um, today. Um, not all those buildings were around in 1854, but um, there has been a lot of progress um, on the campus. Actually, um, the oldest building is somewhere right here in this area. And some of the newer buildings are back here. Actually, the building way back here, I don't know if you can see my cursor, that's my building. <laughs> okay, it's one of the newer buildings, the Nelson um, Science Center. Lincoln was actually chartered as the Ashman Institute um, in 1854. And then um, the founders were John Miller Dickey, who was a Presbyterian minister, and his wife, um, Sarah Cresson. HBCU, right? Historically Black College and University, and that's what Lincoln University is. It's actually the first degree granting <laughs> HBCU. And it was renamed um, in honor of Abraham Lincoln, President Abraham Lincoln in, <laughs> in 1866. So now it's Lincoln University. And you can read the bottom there. That's part of the alma mater. Um, it says, for we love every inch of thy sacred soil, every tree on thy campus green. And it goes on and on. And then it says, our dear old orange and blue. And there's something that comes after that. But I wanted to stop there for right now. And you can see the beauty of the campus. It is really beautiful. And when I first stepped on the campus, on that sacred soil. Um, it was in August of 2006, that was my first time. And I felt the history and I felt at home. And so today I want to give you a journey through the eyes of a neuroscience professor at Lincoln of the history, the rich history, and also the incredible um, history that's going on right now. So let's start with the historical voices and faces. And we'll start with J-R-A-N-T-H-A. J-R-A and T-H-A <laughs> okay. um, -A -A were actually the Amos brothers, James Ralston Amos and Thomas Henry Amos. And they were part of the first graduates of Lincoln University in the class of 1856 with one other um, person, Amistad Miller. But James Ralston Amos, he, he wanted to learn. He wanted to learn theology. And so he applied to Princeton's theological seminary, but he was denied because of his race. And so he went to um, Miller Dickey to see, hey, can, can you help us open a higher education for Black people, for Black males in particular? And so John Miller Dickey founded Lincoln University. Now it's not working for some reason. 
All right. Then there was NFM. Okay, NFM. This is NFM. Um, NFM um, was actually the first African American to graduate from the University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine. And as you're probably wondering, yeah, he was a Lincoln graduate. He was in the class of 1879, and his name is Nathan Francis Mazel. And this is really inspiring to our students today because they said, hey, you know, if he could go to UPenn in 1879, so can we. And then there was HMB. Hmm, HMB. And here he is. You may recognize him. Um, he was in the class of 1923, so he he learned um, at Lincoln. He was he learned a lot even from his parents. His parents were educated and, and they instilled education in him. And he became to the, got to the point where he loved HBCUs. And he actually came back to Lincoln as the eighth president of the university. And he was the first African-American president of Lincoln University. And he served from 1945 to 1957. So here's the leader and he's none other than Horace Mann Bond. He's the father of Julian Bond. And so, you know, Horace Mann Bond, he did a lot for Lincoln and he was a great historian. And then there was Hap, okay. Hap, here he is. I have a, a, a actually interesting connection with this man um, in that he's from the same um, city that I'm from, Memphis, Tennessee. And I received the Hildreth A. Pondexter Research Award while at Lincoln. And so this is Hildreth A. Pondexter. He learned microbiology and became just fascinated with bacteria and became fascinated with tropical diseases such as malaria. And so he studied that. He was also a great football player at Lincoln. He was a star player actually at Lincoln. And so here he is, Hildreth Poindexter. He became the first African-American to earn both an MD and PhD. He was a professor and the head of Howard Medical College. And for several years, he served um, as medical director of the US Public Health Service. So, um, so it's a great um, leader here um, and he learned, he liberated and he led. And then there's LH. I want you to listen to just a little recording. I've known rivers. I've known rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood in human veins. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I bathed in the Euphrates when dawns were young. I built my hut near the Congo, and it lulled me to sleep. I looked upon the Nile and raised the pyramids above it. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans, and I've seen its muddy bosom turn all golden in the sunset. I've known rivers. Ancient dusky rivers. My soul is And this is none other than Langston Hughes. So Langston Hughes, he too went to Lincoln University of the class of 1929. And what you heard was actually a poem that he wrote when he was 17 years old. And it's the it's entitled The Negro Speaks of Rivers. And now our students are learning poetry and learning it in the Langston Hughes Library on campus. And so he too was, he was liberated and, and he led, you know, and I wonder if he would be proud of Amanda Gord Gorman today who gave that such that wonderful um, poem at the inauguration this year. And then there was TM. Hmm, that sounds familiar. <laughs> and so we'll just listen to a little bit of this. I'm not going to play all of it. Uh, when in 
and he was over there at the uh, ticker tape machines. And I uh, waited a little while, I called, and he said, oh, hi, there you. Sit down, sit down. We chatted just a few minutes, and I didn't ask him what was on his mind. I let his take, and all of a sudden, he just looked at me and said, you know something, Peggy? I said, no, sir, what's that? He said, I'm going to put you on the Supreme Court. And I said, I mean, I mean, what did you say? Okay, sir. And he had the press out there waiting in the uh, Rose Garden. And he carried me out and announced it. And then we came back in to over. And I said, Mr. President, look, they're going to get that on the wire in about a minute. I cannot call my wife so she won't hear it. All. He said, you mean you haven't told since yet? I said, no, I could have been with you all the time. Okay. So we called her and I said, got her on the phone. I said, Sissy, are you sitting down? She said, no. I said, well, you better sit down. And she did. And then I'm begging to the president. The president said, Sissy, this is Lyndon Johnson. She said, yeah, Mr. President. He said, I just put your husband on the Supreme Court. And Sissy said, I sure am glad I'm sitting down. <laughs> then he said, so that was Thurgood Marshall, let me go back. But that was Thurgood Marshall, the first African-American Supreme Court justice, a Lincoln graduate. And so, you know, it's just, Lincoln is a unique place that develops these leaders that take all the information from Lincoln and then go out and then just impact the world. And then there's N-A and K-N. And these are really, really short little um, videos here. So let's see, I should play on some. Okay, that was the first one. This decade is the decade of African independence. Forward then to independence, to independence now. Tomorrow, the United States of Africa. Okay. So these are two presidents of countries. Okay. And they were both Lincoln graduates. Namdi Azikwe, he was in the class of 1930. He became the first president of Nigeria, you know, upon independence. And Kwame Nkrumah, he was in the class of 1939, and he became the first president of Ghana. And People today in those countries love Lincoln and they send their students, they continue to send their students to Lincoln University. And then there's AE. And I'll just play a really short part of this. It followed from the special theory of relativity that mass and energy are food, are but different manifestations of the same thing, a somewhat unfamiliar conception for the average mind. Furthermore, the equation E is equal mc square, in which energy is put equal to mass multiplied with the square of the velocity of light. Small amount of mass may be converted into a very large amount of energy and vice versa. The mass and energy were in fact equivalent according to the formula mentioned above. This was demonstrated by Kokra and so Boyce in 1932 and, and actually Lincoln has produced a lot of, um, back in the day, <laughs> quite a few of the physicists um, that are around. There was a great program called Laser, um, and it, it just developed a lot of physicists. Um, so Albert Einstein, Albert Einstein um, gave a talk there and received an honorary degree. And then there's RF, 
and I'll be shortly getting to the contemporary because I know we're running out of time. <laughs> so RF actually became the first female graduate of Lincoln. It was all male before, but Ruth Fells became the very first female in the class of 1953. And then there was LF, Lillian Fishburne. She was in the class of 1971, the first African-American female US Navy Rear Admiral. So she is well, well uh, respected at Lincoln. So let's get to those contemporary voices and faces. So here's the building where I work, Ivory Nelson for the Sciences. And when I came to Lincoln in 2006, Ivory Nelson was the president and he was a chemist and he wanted a building, a better structure for all the sciences. And so he was instrumental in getting this building um, built and some other buildings on campus. So NMC, um, in, in Mark Chikwam, he was in the class of 2011. There he is there with his white coat on, um, getting ready for medical school. And he was my research student and, and research assistant for several years while he was there at Lincoln. And he spent, I think, two years and afterwards being my research assistant. He is now a resident neurologist. And so now he's Dr. Mark Chicklin. And then there's JRS. Um, <laughs> This is a, it's sort of funny. I just, it's a, my, I took students to Jamaica for a research study and we had a ball. We had so much fun, but we did do research. Actually, we were doing research while we were on that boat, actually. But it was liberating to learn like we did. And it was so much fun. And then there's SAB, Shavana Burton. She was the class of 2016. She's a soloist. She was in the Lincoln Concert Choir. And in my pharmacology class, she wrote a song about caffeine and had someone play the guitar while she sang the song. She's very talented. And I'm just going to play just a little bit, just so you can hear her voice, just to see why she's a good. And this is the Lincoln Concert Choir. Lincoln students are always changed. They're changed for the better. They, they go out and be leaders in their communities. And Shavana is still singing. That's her passion. She was a biology major. That's why I knew her so well. That's why she <laughs> wrote a song, Caffeine, in my class. But she had a passion for singing and she is still singing. And then there are the docs. I just can't help but show more docs because since I've been at Lincoln, I mean, there were only, you know, the very first years I was at Lincoln, there were a few people going to medical school or dental or pharmacy school, but now it's just like all of these students are in medical school and they're graduating. These two graduated this year and she's to graduate this year. And these, this student, she's to follow her. So she's in a next year. And these two students are in ending, you know, their beginning their second year. It's just amazing um, that, you know, we have these future leaders in medicine and I, I love it. It's just wonderful. And then there's TDH. This is like a daughter to me. She's uh, Tiffany Harris now. She was Daniels when she was at Lincoln, but she was in class of 2016. And she um, was a biology major. She started off in her public health um, degree program, but now she has her own jewelry line, you know, but she made sure that it was benefiting the American Cancer Society because it was very, very deep. Um, it was something that she just wanted to do because her sister passed away of cancer. And it's just showing you the love and compassion that our students have, but also their talents. And then there's JY. Joy, <laughs> Joy Yaki, 
she was in the class of 2016, and we had the opportunity to not only be um, student, professor and student, but we're actually uh, in the same musical, the same opera together, the Mikado in 2016. And I was her understudy, <laughs> but I also sang in the um, chorus, but it was a wonderful thing working with her outside of the sciences. And I could really learn a lot from her just by doing that. She's so talented. And now she's finished with her master's in environmental science and she's looking on to continue with her PhD. Then there's GN, who is in a PhD program right now in neuroscience. So of course, I'm really excited about him because he's in my discipline and he did research with me while at Lincoln. So, and he was a leader on campus when he was at Lincoln. He was the treasurer of the Student Government of the Association. And then there's TS. So as you mentioned, in the bio, I teach this class called Neuroscience, Philosophy, and Art. Team taught, and I love art. Um, even the artwork behind me, I did that artwork. I just love art. I just, it's amazing. I love it. And so Taylor, um, in the class of 2021, she did this for the, her project, her final project. And it was out of, and this was taught in the spring of 2020 when she was in the class. And she did this saying, hey, I want to encourage everybody. Yeah, there's a lot of challenges going on right now in 2020, but we can still blossom. We can still be fruitful. We can be changed. We can make a change and we can encourage one another. And so that's why that flower is there in the brain because she said, we can blossom. And you can think you know, what you think about the artwork. And then finally, as the student, there's DF. Um, I'll play a little bit of what she says and because I know I'm running out of time. And then I'll talk about her a little more. I think that's what I think is racism. Okay, um, racism is prejudice or discrimination towards one person or a group of people, typically minority. <laughs> Um, anyway, she goes on to talk about racism and she gives her feelings about it. And her name is Deja Foy. She, she was um, in an interesting class I taught over the summer, this past summer, human biology. I never teach bio 101 or I don't teach any 100 level courses actually, but I taught it over the summer and I'm glad I did because I said, okay, the students are going through a lot right now. And so I said, hey, what about the final project? You can do COVID-19 or racism or combine them. And she came up with a project that was just amazing to me. And she actually helped organize like in 2018, a benefit for Antoine Rose's family. I don't know if you know Antoine Rose, but he was killed in Pittsburgh in 2018 and he lived only just a few miles away from her. And so she helped out, organized and you know, advocated. And <laughs> so she is a leader in the making. And this is something she wrote. Um, and um, I, I will play it. I think I, have, I can play that part of it so you can hear it. Mm -hmm. Is this playing? Maybe not. Okay. Um, for me, um, I have to be a change that I want to see. I need to take proper precautions outside of the house to remain as germ-free as possible as far as the coronavirus goes. I need to stand up with my people and demand change. I need to continue to vote, and I need to learn all of my rights so I know how to react to certain situations, as well as knowing that I, what I can and cannot do in certain situations. Um, I've never been more proud to attend an HBCU. I would much rather put my money into my own community to build, grow, and diversify. With the community Lincoln is in, there are a lot of racist people in the area. We have received many threats, and Lincoln has been vandalized on many occasions. It would be very appropriate to increase security around campus to protect the students. So that was Deja. And then there's this KB person. I wonder who that is. <laughs> So anyway, so um, this is an unfinished painting by KB, um, but KB 
lose me. Um, I have so much unfinished work to do. And I, I want to take Deja's words and be that change. And, and it's amazing every day that I step on the um, campus green physically or remotely of Lincoln, I learn something new about Lincoln and my students. I have been liberated to teach and to serve as a mentor to the next generation. And I will definitely heed to Deja's words, have to be a change that I want to see. I will continue to be a leader in this journey and in this journey with humility. So yeah, Lincoln University is truly a unique place, unparalleled. So hell, hell, Lincoln. So with that, I say thank you. And any questions? Oh, sorry, I took a little while. <laughs> yeah. Thank but, you. Are there questions? And I can stop sharing. And, okay. <laughs> so, okay. Good. Okay. I I I wanted to say I wanted to say something. It's not a question, mm -hmm. uh, but I did want to share something. You know what? An amazing university. What a legacy it leaves. Change starts today in a place like this. And you know, what an honor. Thank you for sharing all of this with us. Thank you. oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Karen? Yes. Where exactly is, is Lincoln located? Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's the best place. I was place looking it up as you were talking. I wanted to look it up. And it said it's here in Philadelphia. It's in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. Yeah, it's in Pennsylvania. So we have one um, site at, in Philadelphia, actually. Um, that's for the master's programs that we have. Um, mostly adult learners are there. But the main campus is in Chester County. Um, it's um, near Oxford, Pennsylvania. So it's not far from Kennett Square, um, that kind of area. So there's a lot of Amish around where we live I mean, and work because <laughs> I live close by. Um, so that's where it is. It's in a, there's a little community called Hensonville. Actually that Lincoln is on what used to be mainly Hensonville because the people at, in Hensonville said, hey, yeah, we will um, sell this land to you because we really do want this college here. And so, yeah, it's, that's the area. So not far from um, Delaware, about 25 minutes away from Delaware. And yeah. thank, thank you. I was so totally impressed and I really enjoyed learning about all the people from Lincoln who be, who were, you know, leaders in, in, in the world. Mm -hmm. So I thank you very much for opening my eyes. Appreciate you're, it. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, since uh, Lincoln has is such a uh, has such a marvelous history, uh, and there's a new Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad Freedom Trail mm -hmm. yes. in your area, oh, yes. uh, I'm assuming Lincoln University has to be a stop on that Freedom Trail. Yeah, it is. Um, and I used to be actually on the board of the Kennett Underground Railroad Center, and so mm. I was a tour guide. I um, so I know a lot of the places in that area that <laughs> um, because we had a lot of talks about the Harriet Tubman uh, Freedom Trail as well. And so, um, yeah, there's a little church, Hosanna. So it's part of that Hensonville, but it's on, it's actually still on, on Lincoln's campus, sort of, is right there on the edge of the campus. And so um, that's thought to be a, a, that's thought to be a site. And so it's little Hosanna church. And then there's some, you know, places nearby that are potentially, there's a house not too far from um, Lincoln University that probably more than likely um, was a stop. Yeah, because there's some documentation to, to say that it was. So. This is Angela. I, I don't have a question, but I did have a comment. Um, an excellent presentation. It was uh, it was excellent. Um, okay. But my comment is that I'm uh, well. Before COVID, <laughs> um, I was reaching out to like the local uh, universities. Lincoln was one of them. Cheney, because what we what we at Insight Corporation and we're a, um, 
a small biopharm company where we focus on cancer. But one of the things that we talked about is when we think about inclusion and diversity is coming out to some of the physicians and you know, clinical development folks want to come to those universities and talk about some of the jobs that we have because a lot of people don't know about these roles. And so I probably, you will probably see me at some point at Lincoln with some of my okay. colleagues, you know, doing some, you know, some presentations and work around that. So this was really, really, really good. Oh, great. Thanks. Be great. Yeah, we have a pre med um, club and we have a pre med like office, an uh, office that deals with a lot of professional programs and things like that so yeah that would be great and we have some yeah we <laughs> we just have some like a uh, like uh, um, agreement collaboration with Penn State College of Medicine where we have an early assurance program it's a new thing it's new early assurance program for Penn State Medical School so excellent thank you you're welcome I think Kelly you had a question Yes, thank you. That was really fascinating. I concur with everyone else's uh, comments. Thank you so much. Um, I had just two quick questions. Well, one is, I guess I could look it up. Um, I'm being lazy. What is? Could you give us a general, what the population size is of the student sure. body and the maybe the generally the faculty? Um, but two, I, I, um, in my line of work, I, I do educational research and evaluation. I mostly work with universities um, and K through 12 schools, but largely I write grants with universities um, who you know, are getting US Department of Education funding to, to primarily um, increase um, you know, persistence in STEM majors, graduation in STEM majors. So this is sort of like kismet. Um, and I want to thank you for your talk. I'm just planting a seed. Maybe, maybe <laughs> I'll reach out to you. Maybe I'll send you, you know, if you're ever interested, um, I'd love to talk some more because I mostly evaluate National Science Foundation grants oh. and some others. And um, I just think it would be, I, I think maybe we could stir up something cool together. Okay, so. sounds great. Um, Marion, do you want to answer the question about the number of students? I mean, I have a rough, I know how many, but <laughs> since you are a uh, faculty affairs academic. <laughs> Can you repeat the question from the time? Um, how many students? So it's roughly around 2,000 total students. Yeah, normally. roughly around 2,000. Normally, uh, yeah. Normally, yeah. We have <laughs> approximately, uh, if we include the, the adult population, we are about some between 22 and 25. Um, with just our main campus undergraduate, we are at about 22,000, 2002. Yeah, yeah. Question. And as far as faculty, we have about 100 um, faculty. Yes, go ahead. Yes, that's an ex excellent talk. I uh, learned you know, quite a few new things and uh, very excited to know like all those wonderful graduates from close to home here. Uh, Lincoln University. Uh, what's the mix? And, and somebody, uh, I guess, uh, mentioned about how many students. No, but what's like the the mix, like the demographic mix, or like international students uh, in state, and then also obviously, uh, yeah. What's the uh, demographics? Please. Yeah, um, it's mostly African American, but we have um, you know all. A lot of international students. We have um, students now coming from the community um, around us, which is mostly white. Um, and then we do also have um, there's uh, quite a bit of um, Hispanic, Latino, Latina um, uh, people in the community as well. And we're having some of uh, you know a growing number of students coming from countries like Canada, our top students in our, the biology department is from Canada. Um, we have students all over, um, a lot of in-state students, but we have quite a few out-of-state, um, including like North Carolina. Um, we usually have some, a few from California, some from, we've had them from, we have them every, from everywhere, but international, quite a few from, you know, different African nations, Nigeria, Kenya, yeah. Ghana. Two of the presidents um, were your yeah, presidents, so, <laughs> at least. Yes, exactly. Yeah. We have a lot of like Jamaica and all of those yeah. very cool places. <laughs> right. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. 
Okay. I have well, a question. yeah, Marva. Yeah, and I know um, Lincoln was going through some financial issues and there was talk of closing. Is that still something that's happening? Well, um, maybe a long, quite a while ago. Um, okay. um, that, yeah, that had been quite a while ago um, because we've been doing pretty well for the last few years. Um, I know Cheney was um, having Cheney. quite a bit of financial. The um, which is the um, if you don't if you're not familiar with Cheney University, it's the other HBCU um, in Pennsylvania. It's it actually um, was founded in 1837. Um, I don't, but they didn't start granting degrees until. 1916 or something like that, but it was it, it has recently been having some financial problems. But but Lincoln, we're doing pretty well. Even during the COVID crisis, you know, we were a little nervous, but we're doing pretty well. And now we have that big <laughs> gift from Mackenzie Scott. So, you know, that was a blessing for us. And so, yeah, we're doing pretty well. Um, Good. Yeah, and and by the way, we started off as a private university university, but now it's state related. We're like Temple and Penn State and um, Pitt University of Pittsburgh. We're all those state related <laughs> institutions. Yeah. Right. So you, you receive state, 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 state. You, you receive support from the state. We receive yeah. some support from the state. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Good. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you so much for speaking to us today. This was educational, inspirational, and you exceeded even the title that you uh, gave us today. So oh, this was you. really fun. So thank you so much. And we did record it. So we'll have it Good. available to people at a later time, including you, if you like it, a copy of it. We'll put <laughs> it up on our YouTube channel or something. But thank you so much. And, you know, one of Rotary's... Um, initiatives, uh, many initiatives around the world is to eradicate polio. And as a small thank you to you, we are going to inoculate six children in your honor for speaking with us today oh, to wow. prevent them thank receiving you. polio. Oh, so thank you very much. You. And I will 